Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Come back um, <clears throat> So we're going to start looking at the uh, fundamental equations of motion which is continuity momentum conservation of mass momentum and energy basically right mm. when applied to a turbulent uh, flow right that's what we had started out doing so let's go ahead and do that mm. before I before I sort of uh, delve into that just um, I'm going to write out a few uh, mathematical um, entities which we will need as we go along when we do the uh, math right because we are going to insert the definition of a turbulent property into the fundamental equations of motion as we discussed in previously. So, in that context right. So, this is just a math part and I am going to just um, write that down. So, for example, we have say uh, these quantities which we are going to use for uh, turbulent flow. So, let us just say we have two quantities f and g and these are just two some arbitrary quantities. Now, this could be for example, u and v uh, components of the uh, velocity it, it, it could be the, that as well right. Okay. So, then these are some of the expressions which we will need right the mean of the prime okay and if you sort of say is the u velocity just think about this what it should be whether it makes sense or not okay then okay then f then um, just mm -hmm. okay. so f and so f dash that is also equal to 0. Okay. Then, okay. then Are there proof of this? Of course, there is proof of this, uh, but I guess I am not getting into it, right. It is beyond the scope of this class, and I think you can just be able to you know, look up this uh, mathematics in some very standard basic book, right. Okay. Right. And you take a mean of that which is also equal to the mean of that is all. So, these are some of the quantities uh, which some of the expressions which we will need. Okay. All right. So, now, uh, now let us move on to the equations and let us see what we will do. Now, previously what we have essentially said right is that for a turbulent flow you know uh, this is the uh, velocity profile which I had written in the earlier case, but um, 
incompressible for you know turbulent flow. I'll just write that down one more time, okay, to remind ourselves. Okay, so we did write this. incompressible fluid flow right so then that is this Right. So now, uh, for example, if you have the continuity equation, what oh, continuity equation, right? Which is, you know, um, so for example, you have the continuity equation. What is the continuity equation? Right. So. Um, this is essentially I'm going to call this as one. So this is the this is what um, you know we this is what we we have known so far. Right now, how does this continuity equation change or account for turbulence? I mean, this is an equation. If you solve, you're going to get u v and w, which is this, right? Which is uh, essentially this u v and w, right? However, f using this, you if I do find out what the values of u v and w, do I have sufficient information available to me where I can actually write it in this form, right? So, uh, which is, uh, this is my understanding, right? This is my understanding or how I want to describe a turbulent flow, where I take a mean flow and add a certain fluctuation to it, right? And then these are functions of space and time, all of these quantities, right? So, essentially my job today, right now, I mean, right now the, the, in these equations when we deal with this, the u that you see here is exactly the u which is here. So, essentially, what I am going to do is do that. This is my definition of what turbulence is, which reflects what is turbulence. We saw pictures of that and after that, we were looking at a few things how we can write the velocity. Now, we are actually boiling down to the point where we can actually calculate that what is a minimum or a mean value of the velocity that the flow maintains and then oscillates or uh, randomly oscillates or fluctuates across this mean, right? So, which is that, you know, defined by these uh, primes, right? So, mathematically it boils down to writing out the components of velocity, which is the u, v and w, which is right here, as sums of means and a prime, right? So, if, so that is exactly what I am going to do right now, okay? and then see uh, where this sort of uh, takes us, right. So, what can we do? If I look at this equation, so this is the uh, continuity equation, what can I do? Now, first thing I will do is take a time average. I am going to take a time average and then if I do that, so essentially, so I am going to say I take a time average value of, of the continuity equation, which means right. Is that right? Okay. So, now, Okay. So, this if I take a time average, it is it's like that, right. So, then we do this, okay. 
So, you have equation the expression 1 here right and expression 2 here. This is the time average. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will subtract the second equation from first. Right. I subtract the second equation from the first meaning subtract this right. So, what you have because of that. So, what you have now is that right. Right. What does this boil? So, if I do that, then what do I get? So, u minus u bar, right, and v minus v bar, etcetera. So, if I do that, if you look at these, so u minus u bar is nothing but u dash, v minus v bar is nothing but v dash, right, and w minus w2 is nothing but w dash. So, therefore, Q dash right and this right. So, this is an Okay, so uh, so I have equation. Uh, I have expression three, right? So I have expression three, and I have expression two, right? And of course, I have expression one. Now, what are what is this telling me physically, right? What is this telling me physically? So um, First, the equation uh, equation uh, one here, the expression one here, is basically telling us that the uh, velocity satisfies continuity, right? What the second one is telling us that the time averaged of the velocity also satisfies continuity, right? And what this one is telling us, the third one, is that the fluctuating components of the velocity of a turbulent flow also satisfy continuity. Is that right? So, I think we should write that as a statement here. So, this is basically telling us that both right mean values and the fluctuating so both the mean values as well as the fluctuating components of velocity satisfy continuity. Is that right? It satisfies continuity, right. Okay. So, now having said that, let us now move on to, so that is about continuity. So, now the next thing is, we are going to move on to the Navier-Stokes equation and see, you know, what sort of math will, uh, will be involved in terms of the uh, using a turbulent flow uh, for its analysis right okay so uh, that's that then okay so next thing is nonlinear navier stokes equations
Okay. So, non-linear Navier-Stokes equations. Okay. So, let me write that down first. Okay. So, that is right. Right. So, I am writing this um, without any vector notations. So, essentially, you know, we are just doing that, right. This whole thing becomes a vector and this, right. So, here, uh, so essentially, the left hand side is rate of change of momentum and the right hand side is the um, gravitational force, pressure force viscous force, right. That is what the Navier-Stokes equation is all about. Okay. So, if I do that, right, or dividing by rho throughout, Okay, what happened to the rho g? Well, we just say that we're going to ignore the. Uh, so let's just say we we shall ignore. Um, ignore gravitational. Forces. Okay, so we ignore the gravitational force. Okay, so then that right. So, this is the kinematic viscosity right and or is the dynamic viscosity. So, we divide by rho and then we get this. Okay. So, all right. So, this is my uh, Navier-Stokes equation, where we ignore the gravitational forces, right. So, and that is that. Okay. Now, um, so this is a velocity. So, so essentially you could think of this um, so, rate of change of velocity, which we, which we see on the uh, left hand side, right. But this is something you could also use for any other property, for example, any other physical property, for example, say density or temperature, you could also do that as well, okay. So, anyway, let us start with say uh, velocity, you know, uh, as usual, let us say we have a velocity. Okay. So, let us just say we have a um, velocity where we have the three components, right. This and we shall for, for this for a particular case we shall consider the uh, the u component or x component or i component of the velocity. Is that right? Okay. So, if I do that then what shall we get? Right. If I do that, then what do I get in the sense if I use it over here, right. So, then uh, in, in, in that case, number there are two things here, okay. We will take the, um, then in this will mean and we have spoken about this. So, now you have to um, remember this. So, d u d t, this the, this is something which I will write out from the, uh, uh, th this expression d u d t is ex essentially what we have here, which is nothing but um, Navier-Stokes equation. So, if I write out like that, essentially taking uh, u in, st in the place of the v here, right, this is a total velocity. So, then um, I what I get here is
is that right? Okay. Now, this is also equal to, you know, this is the total derivative of material derivative, right. So, this is also equal to right plus right so y is the left hand side equal to this so essentially instantaneous change in the u component of velocity or x component of velocity and the change in the velocity due to its movement right uh, in the uh, and due to its movement Okay, so so the, the the fluid is moving in a certain direction, and because of which the, it's the fluid which is moving, which has a velocity capital V here, right? So I am looking at the changes in the velocity. So whatever directions of velocity that the fluid is moving in this particular case, it's important to note here. So the fluid is moving in the x, y, and z direction. So because of this total movement in the fluid flow in a 3D domain, what is the change in the velocity u component, right. So, this u component of velocity is the component of velocity in the x direction, right. The movement however, is happening x in x, y and z directions, right. So, the v, so what the convective term here is looking at is essentially the change in the velocity u u component of velocity due to the movement of the fluid and hence we have uh, the uh, capital V there, right, which, which is essentially denoting the total velocity, right. So, therefore, the total derivative on the left hand side looks like that, right, total velocity looks like that. Now, then let us see, now we are, we are slowly getting into details of this. Now, let us now look at this uh, term v dot this right del. So, what is that? So, that is let us just say will be equal to you can find that out right. So, let me write it for you once and then you know you should be able to do that without writing also. this what is del del this right so this is nothing but therefore i can write this as Is that right? So, you get that. So, then you have something like this. Okay. Now, so this is almost like it is um, you know uh, it is almost like an operator this v dot. Now, then then what happens to the term this right the second term basically the convective term. So, you see how mathematically this gets a little Mm, yeah, slowly gets a little complicated. All this is doing, all we are talking about here is basically the fluid moving and because of that there is fluid moving in space. So, physically the fluid is moving and because of that there is a change in the uh, x component of velocity, but when we write it down it becomes a little more complicated, you know, although it, it is that simple. It is just a convective change in the x component of velocity. So, what we first did is v dot del, so which is this right and you get that right. So, therefore, right then the second term becomes into e right. right? So, if I do that v dot uh, into u is nothing but
correct. So, therefore, uh, this boils down to this equation in this expression. Okay. Can we write something else to this? Can we can we write this also in another form? In in, in uh, can we do any other change to this? Right. So can I also write this as, for example, this? Um, right. So U W. So, can I just write it like that, right. So, uh, let us just say this is from a math point of view and yes, I, I, I can actually write it. So, uh, I am not going to put that, put this down as a formula. What you see here is that yes, I, I could actually write this down in this uh, fashion, okay. Now, if I do that, okay, then let us take a time average. Let us take a time average of right. So, therefore, I have and a time average of that is equal to a time average of that this is also a time average of that right so now we should use the expressions which we had used i had written out right at the beginning here right so i had written out these expressions so these are expressions that uh, one will I will just going to sort of pull up and use it in this case, right. So, when I do this, how, what can I write? So, this is equal to this this, right. So, this can also be written as again, this is just the math and I have that okay then um, similarly so we will have time average of right this. So, again ok. So, of course, I can you can see that I can write this as delta y u dash v dash. This right.
this. Right? So, I can write that. I basically, I am bunching up, you know, the first terms in, in I am bunching up the first terms in the brackets here, the, 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 these three terms into here and then I am writing out separately the second terms out here. Okay? So, if I uh, do that, okay, and of course, this is the, uh, this, right. Okay. Now, again, so let, let, uh, let, let that be, so th we will just leave it at that. Okay. Then again, what we had written out as the, uh, deriv the total derivative right. So, v dot del is something that we have written out as above. Okay. So, if I do this and here also we should take the time average for this. Okay. So, taking time average, right. If I do that, Okay. So, again, so let us see if we can write. Uh, so, if I do this, right, taking time average of the expression for total velocity. So, if I do that, then okay. So, v dot del into u. So, that that is exactly we take the time average of that. So, if we take the time average of that of that, okay. Um, Okay, so if I do that, right? So I'm going to take the, okay. So this, and then we take a time. Uh, yeah, this is just something that we've written out right here. We've taken out right here. We've written out right here. Okay. All right. So now, hmm. Okay. I'm just writing it out as we've written just now, that's all. Okay, so that is the now. Okay, just so go on to the next page. Okay, to the next things. Okay, fine. So we leave it at that. 
Okay. So, if I take time average, I can write out the expression for uh, this. Right. So, now, um, so essentially what I did is I looked at this equation, right. I looked at this equation and each of these terms here, right. That is what I have written like this. So, this term is actually the same as this, right. So, therefore, I am able to, when I write this, I take this one uh, u bar uh, over this. It is the same thing. You just, uh, you know, when you do this, you just take a, you know, derivative in the x direction on the um, mean velocity, okay. All right, so um, so that's that. So if I uh, do this, right? Um, now, uh, if I if I do this, right? Now, look at this term here. In, in this expression, now look at this term or these group of terms do they make any impression to you so I, if you do if you see this right uh, this is the instantaneous derivative of the mean velocity this is u bar del u del bar uh, del x v bar del del u bar del y w bar w uh, del u bar del z do these terms together mean anything to you? Is, is, is it ringing a bell? So, essentially it is an instantaneous change in the mean velocity and also convective change in the mean velocity due to the mean flow. So, therefore, the flow of the velocity that we are considering now is the mean flow and hence we have these components which is u bar, v bar and w bar. Right? So, this is, a ch this is a change in the mean velocity that we are talking about. Okay. So, therefore, this is something I can also write as uh, d mean d t. Right. I can also write it in this uh, uh, fashion. Right. So, therefore, essentially what I am talking about here is The first term boils down to uh, this, right? This, right? Plus, of course, we have take a mean. that take a mean. Is that right? So, the first term again. So, left hand side is uh, okay. this small mistake here. So, what is the difference between uh, so, this is important here. What is the d difference between this and this term? So, this term is essentially the total derivative of the mean u component of velocity right so total derivative of the mean x component of velocity what this is is essentially the mean of the total change in the u component of velocity you understand let me write that down so what the left hand side here is left hand side here is mean of total derivative or material derivative. So, mean of total derivative of x component of velocity, right. And What is this? This is total derivative 
of mean x component of velocity. So, this is the total derivative of mean x component of velocity, right. So, and the left hand side is essentially mean of the total derivative of x component of velocity, that is the difference, okay. So, as you can see, I can also write this for the, uh, the y and the z components of velocity. So, let us do that, okay. So, this is one uh, component that we wrote down. So, what is this thing that we are writing? Well, this is nothing but the Navier-Stokes equation, but now as you can see that I have mean components going on here, I have fluctuating components going on here, I have time derivatives going on here of time derivatives of, of uh, individual components of velocity as well as derivatives, right. So, I can also write similarly for the y component and z component. Right. So, which is basically let us just say and the mean is equal to right plus mean and mean components. Okay. Similarly, for the z component, Uh, time average and time average, right. So, if you see that, so these are the three um, equations, right. Now, um, so if I if I if I say if if I can if I'm able to write it this way, then shall I write in therefore shall I write write dv this just put a notation there. Right. So, i is also equal to, so i is equal to 1, 2, 3 and j is equal to uh, 1, 2, 3 as well. Is that right? So, you can cross check if whether this expression is correct or not, how, and so that we get back the equations that I have written above. Yeah. Okay. So, we can uh, let me do a one cross check, ok. I will do one cross check. So, if I do a cross check, you need to do this yourself and make sure that you know you get back the equations. Cross check, ok. So, say i is equal to 1, right. Then for that, j is equal to 1 to 3, right. So, therefore, Well, yeah, since I am not writing it, ok. Ok, I should have written that there. I was missing out the mean. So, that is that, ok. Plus, so we will essentially have three terms now for the second uh, term, where i is equal to 1, but j goes from 1 to 3. So, what we will have here is, 
let us just say for i is equal to 1, 1 meaning the um, physical component is x right and j meaning 1, 2, 3 means you go from x, y and z right that is what you want. So, this del del x so therefore, is x component of velocity and j is also 1 which is this. Then this is still 1 right is that uh, correct. Del del x are we getting back So, this should not be that right. So, it should be y here, it just should be y and this should be this and v dash. Is that correct? Is that correct? Right. Okay. So, essentially what then I think what we can uh, let, let us just correct that then. Uh, this is fine okay. except let us just say that j is equal to 1 and i goes from 1 to 3. I think that should be correct and let us sort of rewrite this. Okay. Let us rewrite this. Okay. So, then if j is equal to 1 right, and i goes from 1 to 3. So, then it is del del x. So, x 1 is x right and I have i is 1. So, it is u okay, and um, j is also 1 which is again u and I have this. Okay. Then again i is equal to 2. So, del del y okay then u will go from because j is 1 so that will remain which is u dash and i again will become 2 which is v dash which is this right plus x 3 is this again j is equal to 1 uh, sorry uh, j yeah j is equal to 1. So, the u dash will remain and then what you will have here is this and this. So, now that works right. So, now that works. So, if I write this equation such that this is uh, so therefore, I'm, I am going to write this total equation this way. So, that uh, this is this is a condition we need to use along with it along with this. Okay. So, then we get back the equations that I just spoke about. Okay. So, um, right hand side of course, remains. Um, so, what we basically did is we wrote out the left hand side of the equation. Okay. Right hand side remains uh, this way. So, let us write out therefore, the uh, final form. Okay. What did we get? So, the final equation Okay. So, this is okay. Let, let me write that down. So, left hand side turned out to be the mean of the total derivative of the velocity is equal to total derivative of the mean comp mean velocity. time derivative okay and so this is the left hand side right and the right hand side is this
Yeah, that is also correct. Essentially, the mean value, right? So this is essentially. So therefore, the uh, as you can see, this is this is a time average. This is a time average. So this equation is uh, time average Navier-Stokes equations, right? So this is a time averaged Navier-Stokes equation. right and uh, these are the terms that we get right okay now this is the uh, this is the term this term right so that becomes complex this is a term which is complex and it sort of brings on challenges uh, with it okay and um, i think this is where we'll start next class right go on to that and we we will talk about of course the energy equation after that as well but this is this is going to be the biggest challenge of the navier stokes equation when you look at this point of view so now finally to sort of to close so if you we started out with uh, the velocity essentially this is the same velocity that you get for any field but it's just that to study a turbulent flow we have started writing out that uh, velocity component in terms of a mean component of velocity and a fluctuating part. So now that is how we are defining our turbulent flow, right? And that is an equation which will have to be plugged into the basic fundamental equation of motion, mass, momentum, energy. So this is the momentum uh, conservation, which is the Navier-Stokes equation, right? And therefore, we ha what we're doing right now is uh, inserting the definition of the velocity as as we have decided for turbulent flow into the basic equation to see how far we can go and what it's worth what what are each of these terms uh, meaning right so that is what we've done we've landed up with the final equation and this like i said is laden with you know problems so let us come back and uh, look at those right in the next uh, class for now i think i should i will stop okay thank you